uh, explain to us, well, shall I call it her trust or the HER trust? Her trust. Her trust, okay. Yes. Uh, explain to us, first of all, how you came to be involved, Alex. Uh, well, I basically was approached by the charity to, to be involved and to put my name towards it. And uh, after having read the research they do and, and what their objectives are, I actually thought it would be something because it's something that's close, so close to my heart that mm. would be very important for me to support. Um, it took a long so time for you to conceive, didn't it? It took a long time for me to conceive. And um, the, what I like about this charity is the fact that alongside the, the obviously the traditional treatments for infertility, which most people will understand is in vitro fertilization, they also are very keen on researching and working with holistic approaches as well, which is what I did when I was trying to conceive. So Gita, tell us a bit more about that. It is the essential belief that, there, that there's more to fertility problems than just the basic medical side of things? Yes, absolutely. The charity, Her Trust, Her H-E-R, as you said before, it stands for a health education and research for women. Um, there's more to um, reproductive health than just conventional treatments. So the charity is um, committed to um, raising awareness about holistic health. What kind of things are we talking about? Well, we're talking about, um, uh, apart from um, giving information about the cause, diet, nutrition, um, relaxation, and the, the whole health is going to be taken into account and we would like to promote research um, into women's uh, reproductive health as well as raise awareness. We will have a, a website launched today um, called it's hertrust.org and that's going to give lots of information about women's reproductive health mm -hmm. and have um, an interactive site for women to contact this website and ask their questions and have experts as well as ex to answer their questions and also to share their experiences with mm. other women. Okay, Alex, you practice something called uh, Kundalini Yoga as yes. part of this. Now, what was that? Well, I, I started doing Kundalini Yoga when I was in, in the midst of doing in vitro. Mm. And basically, I, I went in there with an idea that I just wanted to relax and try and reduce my stress. But... Um, the teachings I found enormously helpful. Some people may not. I mean, a lot of it is to do with meditation and there's a lot of chanting. Um, they work a lot on, um, or the classes I went to worked a lot on women's internal organs, specifically focusing on exercises to sort of release stress internally. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of a hard thing to explain unless you're yeah. doing it, yes. but it, I found it hugely beneficial. It's probably also a hard thing to get some parts of the medical profession to perhaps take seriously, because I, I, I can imagine yes. doctors saying, this is a medical issue, you know, let's not get distracted by all these well, other things. I think, funnily enough, I mean, the doctor that I worked with when I was um, going through in vitro fertilization, he actually said to me at one point, because I'm one of the unknowns, there's no medical reason that anybody can see why I couldn't get pregnant naturally. No, I don't have polycystic ovarian syndrome. No, there, there's uh, there's no, no scar tissue. There's absolutely no reason. And, and there are many women who are in this very frustrating mm. situation. And um, my doctor at the time, he said, alongside in vitro, do whatever you can. Do yoga. Have acupuncture, which I was also doing. He said, we don't know. We don't know why women can't get pregnant. He said we don't actually know how women even really do get pregnant. Um, so they, they were kind of open to us trying anything, yeah. really. Gita, a lot yeah. of women will be watching this around the country and going, I want some help like that. Mm -hmm. How do they go about getting it? Well, they can log on to our website, um, get information, ask questions. Um, and um, they, we will be having some open public meetings. Oh, Alex mentioned things like, for instance, acupuncture. Now, that does cost money, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and in vitro itself is, is an expensive That's procedure. Yes. Um, but what I think is wonderful about this particular, uh, the, the charity website, is it's updated every two yes. weeks. Mm. Right. All of the research projects that are going on continuously mm. are being updated, so mm. women will have 
really current right. information. Okay. Yeah. Peter, well, what about help with the psychological side of all of this? Because I'm sure, as, as Alex has, has sort of hinted, I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a long and difficult process. It can take a huge toll on the, not just the woman, but also her partner in their effort to try and have a child. Yes, I mean, that's absolutely true. Um, in fact, most fertility centers would provide counseling and support during the process if somebody is going through IVF treatment. But as Alex said earlier, there's lots of stress involved, mm -hmm. and I think it's important to encourage women uh, to, um, to de-stress themselves because there's lots of chemicals released mm -hmm. in the body as a result of stress. And what we want to do through this charity is actually to produce an evidence base um, to integrate conventional and complementary therapies. Right. You're talking about stress. Uh, maybe your work as uh, Dr. Elizabeth Corday mm -hmm. and filming that had something to do with it. Speaking of which, <laughs> yes. it's going to be farewell soon to yes. Dr. Corday. It will be farewell. Um, I mean, certainly when I was trying to get pregnant, uh, I could only do it within the window of my hiatus, which was 10 weeks. Mm. So that was a stress in itself. That'd be very difficult. I couldn't, I couldn't. You had to get pregnant to order. Effectively. I had to get pregnant mm -hmm. to order. And the first time it worked, and, and we tried subsequently a few times, and it didn't work, which was frustrating, but also, in a sense, understandable because of the situation I was in. So um, I, will be, I will be leaving. Mm -hmm. And um, it, uh, there is absolutely no bitterness to my leaving. And, um, really? Seriously? Seriously. Honestly? Seriously. And it, unfortunately, I think the press has... Have, have Mis, been misinformed and misinformed the public because I'm leaving because my contract has come to its natural end. And um, so is it not true that that you were written out because they because, because of my age? Older is that absolutely not true at all? Not true. I mean, I, I, it's I'm I'm horrified and embarrassed uh, mm. for ER because they have no right to be tarnished with the sort of ageism brush because they are absolutely not that at all. Uh, and we we mutually felt that. The, the, my character storylines had run their course. All of the characters that, m that Corday had been involved with have left the show. Yes. And, um, and we agreed that maybe it was time to move on. So in the true ER tradition, will there be a horrible accident? <laughs> well, I don't think I'll be, I'll be killed by a helicopter because that's happened already. Yes. Um, I don't think so. I think they will hopefully um, let her live. <laughs> You could, be involved, in, goodbye. You could <laughs> be involved in a confrontation with a, with a, a black bear walking into the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> the it would be true to life. Yes, yeah, yeah. well, it would be true to ER. To <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> well, thanks very much to both you, Geeta Nagand and Alex Kingston. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>